Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Nora, and I'm so glad to be with you online to worship God in this first Sunday of 2021. But first, I want to remind you that because of the increased number of COVID infections, we will be online only for the time being at 9.30 and 11. Also, on January 24th, we will have our Mission Sunday. It's a shoe-in and a 5K. Bring your shoes to donate and check all of the information on the website. If you want to support the church with your tithes and offerings, there are four ways in which you can do that, and they're on your screen. Here at the Net Church, we have a multi-campus worship experience, and each one serves a little different function. One of our campuses, the Network Campus, tries to do most of its work in the community with those who need it the most. And in addition to the Net Church being people who do this work at this campus, we also partner with third-party vendors to help us do the Lord's work in our community. Hear now from one of those vendors as they tell you a little bit about what they do at the Network Campus. Hi, my name is Amanda Miller, and I'm the director of Proskuneo School of the Arts Norcross, also known as Pesota Norcross. We provide opportunities for students during the week on Saturdays and on Sundays to interact with students in the community through arts and tutoring education. The need in the community for these elementary students is huge as Gwinnett County has 57% below grade reading level rate in this county. So it is very important for us to provide this tutoring to the children, but also provide arts education because it has been proven to help students in their studies. I personally have a passion because um, I love teaching students, interacting with them, helping them, encouraging them, and seeing them grow and learn, whether it's in school or in the arts, to watch them come from not understanding something to like the light bulb going off and they're like, oh, I understand it and they get it. It's just such a huge success for them and encouragement for them to continue to go on in whatever they're doing, whether it's school or arts education. If you want to know more, you can go to our website at um, proscaneo.org slash pesoda dash norcross. As part of our traditional service, we like to steady ourselves to receive God's word with a call to worship at the beginning of the service. These are texts from scripture that are either sung or spoken, and they help us to focus on the reason that we're here. So hear today's call for worship. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, we start this new year this morning praising your name. We are grateful for your presence in our lives. We pray that you receive our praise this morning, our music, our songs, our voices. Challenge us this morning to be the church you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now join me as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading this morning from the NIV translation, and from, I'm reading from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, 
verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Epha and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Today is the Sunday we celebrate the Epiphany, and on that day we celebrate two things. We celebrate the arrival of the Magi to the Christ child and the physical manifestation of Jesus to the world. With our first hymn today, we will be celebrating that, so I invite you to sing along with me at home, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to demand. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of hosts in human vesture, in the body and the blood, he will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. At his feet the six-winged seraph, cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, Alleluia. Now for the second reading this morning, it comes from the New Testament, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written about briefly. In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit, by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, 
members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished, accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the ways in which we are a community of faith together is by supporting one another and sharing on one another's burdens. So if you are, have a prayer request, you can share that prayer request with us on, online, or you can simply uh, reach out to one of the team members. If you have a prayer request, just uh, tell us, and there will be people praying all throughout the church. Let's pray together. Loving God, this morning and this new year, we praise your name. We thank you for your presence in our lives, in the good days and in the bad days. This morning we put before you all of those in our community of faith who are struggling, who are uh, struggling with illnesses, who are uh, in pain because they have lost loved ones, um, because they haven't been able to see family and friends. Heal them, comfort them this morning. We ask also for all of those in this country and throughout the world who are suffering, those who are leaving countries, crossing borders, uh, children who are hungry, that somehow you in your mercy and throughout your church will touch their lives in an amazing way. In this morning, our loving Father, we again give you thanks and ask you that you challenge us in this new year to not stay within these walls, but to be the church that you have called us to be and to share with many the transforming message of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. And you can pray in the language of your heart. Uh, English will be on the screen and I will be praying in Spanish. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día dánoslo hoy y perdona nuestras ofensas así como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos dejes caer en tentación, más líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria. Por los siglos de los siglos. Amén.
Good morning, church. Before we go into the message that God has prepared for us this morning, let's start with the prayer. Let us pray. God, we come into your presence this morning, three days into a new year. And God, we come some lamenting, some rejoicing. But God, we can all agree that there were challenges, but there were also joys in this past year. But what matters the most, God, is that we have been able to see you through it all, even though there were moments where it was hard. God, as we approach this new year and enter into this new season, may we be reminded of what it means to be your children, to be your community, and to be a church that you have called us to be. God, speak to us this morning and meet us where we are, for we know that that is what you do. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for your embrace always. And God, I ask that this morning, that the words that are about to be spoken are not mine, but yours. That God, your heart will be revealed in this place, into the homes of every person watching this morning. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, good morning, church. Um, I am excited, honored, and humbled to be able to kickstart this new year of 2021 with you. You know, it is a new year, and we're already three days in as it is January 3rd. And the thing is, um, if you guys use social media or have talked to people, especially in this past month, I know there were a lot of people looking forward to 2021 almost like it was the time that Jesus was going to come back. That all of a sudden, everything was going to change when 2021 hit. There were memes and, and status updates saying, oh, I just can't wait for the new year. New year, new beginning. You know, everything's going to stop and end of 2020. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. But the reality is there is still COVID. There is still suffering. And like Pastor Rodrigo has emphasized a lot, there are still a lot of empty chairs at a lot of our tables. There are still people that lost their jobs in the middle or early of last year that still need a job. The reality is there are still challenges. A flip of a calendar does not change everything. So something that I wanna emphasize this morning is that though the situation may not change, something that we can change is our heart. The series for this month is Bring It On 2020. And I wanna tell you that I'm ready, and I hope that we are all ready as a church to really look upon 2020 in the face and say, bring it on. And our hope as a church and through our staff is that throughout this month, we can equip you and equip ourselves with ways that we can face 2021 head on. And today, the sermon title is Not Afraid, Trust. So let's think about what that word means to us, trust. When you think of that word trust, what does that mean? That word could have changed for you throughout 2020. It was easy to trust our government, or officials, or leaders, but then that trust may have been broken. Could have been easy to trust that, you know, in December of 2020, on Christmas, I will be able to have finally a good Christmas dinner with my family, but that trust was broken. That word could have meant many different things, but could have changed in meaning. I know that 2020 has been challenging. But in 2021, my hope is that we could have a new meaning of what trust means to us. To think and to look deeper into this word trust, I want us to focus on someone that I think is very important in the Bible and in our faith, who is the Apostle Paul. Who knows who the Apostle Paul is? But something that I want to challenge you is to really think about if you truly know the story of the Apostle Paul. Today, I'm going to read to you from Acts 9, 
26 to 28, and it states, When he had come to Jerusalem, this is talking about Paul, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. What we see here is a glimpse of Barnabas talking about Paul being this man who has witnessed Jesus Christ and who walks out into the world boldly proclaiming who he has seen and what he believes. But the thing is, this is not all. We need to understand how Paul came to that point. Before Paul was Paul, for those that you may know, he was known as Saul, a persecutor, an oppressor who was part of the Jewish sect called the Pharisees. What Paul did was literally go spit in the face of Christ and Christians, Christ followers, to go oppress them, persecute them, take them away. But when we look a little before in Acts chapter 9, what we see is what we call a conversion story on the road to Damascus. What happened was Paul was literally on his way to Damascus to go take and oppress, persecute, and arrest Christ followers. And on his way, Christ appears to him through a voice. And in that moment, Saul knew that Christ was his Lord. He gets struck with fish-like scales on his eyes. He's blinded for three days, and Christ tells him, Go into town and I will tell you what to do. Just to give you a quick summary, he goes and he stays in this home and he is blinded. He cannot eat, he cannot drink, and he cannot see for three days. And in the midst of all that, God has a plan. And what does God do? He calls upon this humble disciple named Ananias. Some of you may have not heard of this name, but I believe Ananias is someone that we should all seek to be. Because what Ananias does is Christ speaks to him and says, you need to go down Straight Street and you will find Saul. And you're going to meet him and pray for him. And it's, the scales will fall off because this man is going to be an instrument for my kingdom to bring the good news to the Gentiles. Ananias at that moment is like, no way. Do you know who that guy is? Because I know who that guy is. He's the guy that was coming after me. He was the guy that was trying to oppress us as your people, Jesus. And you're telling me to go meet him and he's going to be an instrument for your kingdom? That just does not make sense. I can't do that. That's crazy. How can I go to this man who we see as an enemy and now you are calling him to be an ally? It just doesn't make sense. This is the story of Paul. And what happens is Ananias goes, prays for him. The scales fall off. After three days, what does he do? He gets regained. He regains his strength, is filled with the Holy Spirit, and goes out to the synagogues and to the streets and starts preaching the name of Jesus. Awesome. That sounds quite awesome. But the reality is, let's take a seat and think about being in the shoes of those disciples and of those Christ followers. I know this man, Saul. This is the guy that has been coming out after us. He's an evil person. He has brought so much destruction to us as a people and to your name, Jesus. And now you're telling me that this man is out in the streets preaching your name? He's broken. He's not one of us. He's sinful. Just to put it into greater context, let's think of it this way. <clears throat> I know that college football is a big thing here in the South. It's also a big thing in the great state of Ohio where I'm from. But the thing is, to be honest, I'm more of a basketball guy than a football guy. But one thing that I know is OSU fans, Ohio State fans, do not get along with Michigan fans. That's the reality. You just can't get along with them. It's like a rule. You just do not mix and mingle. Or if you do, you make it very clear that you are not one of me and I am not one of you. 
But let's think about this as Saturday, Saturday in the afternoon, college football. And I'm there in my OSU gear with Buckeyes around my neck, scarlet red painted on my face with my O flag in the air. And then next Saturday, you see me in blue with the Wolverines jersey on saying, let's go Michigan. Both sides will not be happy. The OSU side will say, well, you're a band, you just jumped on the bandwagon, you betrayer, what are you doing? You're crazy, you are never a real fan. And then the people on the Michigan side would be like, oh, you're a hypocrite, you are not a true fan. You were just on the OSU side, now you're saying that you wanna be a Michigan fan? No way. That's just a glimpse of the context of Paul's story. This person went from a Pharisee to a disciple of Christ. The thing about Paul's story is that I think a lot of the times we are able to see it as a story that is being spoken to us. Because the reality is, church, you and I, we are all broken. We are all sinful. We are all on the other side at some point. But Christ allows us to take a step into the side where we are able to call ourselves disciples, where we're able to call ourselves Christians, or we're able to call ourselves partners, or we're able to call ourselves children of God. But to give you a little bit more insight on me and why I chose this story this morning, it's because this story speaks a lot into my life. And Paul is someone that I really connect with. You know, it was back in 2012, 2013, when God gave me a calling to go into ministry. The reality was, was God didn't meet me when I was in my holiest place, when I felt the most righteous, when I was the most involved with church. God actually met me in my lowest, darkest, most sinful place to give me that calling, and it did not make sense to me. I thought only God chose the ones that were righteous, the ones that were worthy, the ones that were capable and able to do the things that he called them to do. But God met me in the midst of my sin to call me, and it did not, did not make sense to me. It's very similar to the story of Saul. He was literally walking on the way to oppress people and Jesus met him where he was and God met me where I was. And when I had that change of heart and I really accepted and realized this was my calling, I took a year off of school because I was studying business and I was like, you know what? I am going to start making changes and I'm gonna start figuring out how I can be this disciple of Christ. And I remember one evening specifically I was working as a part-time server at this Korean restaurant. And one of uh, my friends, she came in and she sat down, so I was serving her table. And she asked me, this was in the summer, so she said, hey, did you register for your classes for the fall? And I told her, I was like, no, I'm actually taking a year off and I'm trying to discern my calling because I think God is gonna call me to be a pastor. She looked at me straight into my eyes and she scoffed and she said, you, you, you are going to be a pastor? No, I don't think so. The reality was, was she knew who I was. She knew my sin. She knew where I have been and where I've come from. But still, even in that moment, I knew that God's calling was real. Why? Because I trusted in the work that God was doing in my life. It's the same thing when it comes to Paul. After he is filled with the Spirit, goes out, regains his strength, does his work in the kingdom, he goes to meet up with the rest of the disciples. And what does the verse say? They were afraid. They did not understand. They said, he is not one of us. Why? Because we know who he is. But the thing is, Paul knew who he truly was. He knew the work that God was doing in his life. So church, this leads to the first point of today's message. Trust in the work that God is doing within your life. It doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter what your condition or situation might tell you. 
But if you truly believe and know that God is doing work in your life, which church, I believe God is doing work in your life, has been, is, and will continue to do work in your life, trust in that. I believe that is one of the first steps we can do to have a change of heart in this new year. To trust that even though my situation may look challenging, even though my circumstances really do stink, that I believe and know and trust that God is working in my life. That there is work being done within my life. To trust in that, like Paul trusted in that. So he can boldly stand and say, you know what? No matter what the situation tells me, no matter what you tell me, I trust that God is working in my life. So again, think about it. Why was Paul able to go into the synagogues and go into the streets and preach the name of Jesus less than a week after he was this Pharisee? He was this persecutor and oppressor of Christians. How was he able to do that? Some of us may think, well, he was just a hypocrite. No, he was someone who knew and trusted that God was doing work in his life. And he was not afraid of what other people may think. He was not afraid of what both sides would think of him. He was not afraid of what the situation and circumstances might bring to him. He faced those battles head on with the trust, knowing and trusting that God is doing something in his life. Church, I want to encourage you this morning to let you know that I believe and I hope that you believe that when you look at yourself in the mirror, no matter what you may look like, no matter where you have come from, no matter what situation you are in, that in this very moment, there is work being done in your life. And to be honest, I'm a believer that that work didn't start today, but that work has been going for a very long time. But do you trust in that? Do you trust that even when the others say that you are not worthy, that you trust that God calls you worthy? Do you trust that God looks upon you and calls you his beloved? Do you trust that God loves you, wants to use you, wants to hold your hand and be a part of your life and walk and grow with you? Do you trust in that, in the way that Paul did so? But if we continue to look at this story, we see someone very important arise, and his name is Barnabas. When all the other disciples were, were, this is a young term, throwing shade and saying that, hey, this guy is not one of us, Barnabas says, no, he is because I have heard and I believe and I trust and I know that he was doing the work for the kingdom, that I know and I trust that he did meet Christ on that road to Damascus. So no matter what you all think, I trust in the work that is being done in his life, so I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to walk with him. Because I not only trust him, but I trust the God that is within him. The second point, church, that I want to encourage you with is trust in the work that God is doing in others. Something that you might have seen and felt or experienced through this past year. 2020 was no joke, but I feel like it was even harder for those that were alone. We can't do this fight alone. We are not called to do this battle alone. We are supposed to do it together, and that is why we are together. That is why we are a church. Because we are called to do this life together to grow together, to love God together, and to love each other together. Barnabas trusted that God was working and moving in this person. Barnabas was the one that lifted this man up because he trusted that God was working within him. My hope, church, is that we're not just a church that says, yes, we are a church, we are a family, we are a community, we do things together. But my hope, church, is that we will be a church that will look upon each other and say, I trust and I believe that you are a work of God. That I trust 
That though what I may see may be in certain way, even though I may have my judgments, even though I may know who you are, that I trust that God is working in your life. That we can look upon every single person within our community, within our family, and be able to look at them and know that you are someone special. No matter what others may say, no matter what your circumstances may say, I can look upon you and say you are a work of God. And that God is continuing to work in your life. So church, that is my second point of how I think we could have a change of heart in this new year. First, trust that work that God is doing in your life. And second, trust the work that God is doing in the life of others. Let's be like Paul, but let's also be like Barnabas. Let's be like Paul, the ones who can see ourselves for who we are in the eyes of God. Let's be like Barnabas, where we can see others through the lens of God. I want to leave you with this quick story. You know, I'm fairly new to the net, And the first time that I ever met Pastor Rodrigo was over Zoom. And in that moment, after 10 minutes, I want to say it was not even 10 minutes after we spoke on Zoom. And I kind of let him know that, hey, um, you don't know me, but I want to work for you. He looked at me and he said, Wu, I think we can be like Paul and Barnabas. I think we can do this work together like Paul and Barnabas. The reason I share this to you is humbly and not to lift myself up, but I believe in that moment that Pastor Rodrigo was able to see God in me. And I was able to see God in him. And I hope, church, that we can be the Barnabas and Paul for others. We can look at someone and say, I know that I can grow with you because I know you are worthy because I know that God is working in your life. Church, pray with me. God, we thank you that you are a God that is always moving, that you are a God that is constantly and consistently running after us, that you are a God that continues to do your work within us. And God, I ask that this church, that this community and this family can continue to have a change of heart, a heart that looks more like yours. That when we look upon this new year and this past year and the challenges that we may face, that we know that with this change of heart, with the strength that you give us, that we are able to overcome, that we are not afraid, that we can say bring it on, and that we can continue to grow in our relationship with you and our relationship with each other. God, I truly believe that every single person in this church and every single person watching today is here for a reason, that we need each other, that we can't do this alone, and that we are supposed to walk this journey together. So God, continue to bless our relationships, even though things are being done virtually, that God, in your amazing, magnificent, and mysterious ways, that your spirit will move and allow us to continue to be like Paul and Barnabas together. We thank you, God, for your love. We love you, we thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. With today's message, we have two main points, to trust the work that God is doing in our lives and to trust the work that God is doing in the lives of others. With our final hymn today, we echo those sentiments, and I invite you to sing with me, Give to the Winds Thy Fears. thy fears hope and be undismayed God hears thy sighs and counts thy tears God shall lift up thy head through waves and clouds and storms God gently clears the way wait thou God's time so shall this night soon end in joyous day let us in life in death thy steadfast truth declare and publish with our latest breath thy love and guardian care 
Thank you, church, for joining us this morning online. And I know that it's not easy and things are different that we're going to be having to meet virtually. I know Pastor Rodrigo teased us with our parking lot worships and it was great, but we are back to being online and we thank you all for joining us this morning. And may we continue to grow even though we may be doing this all virtually. Church, continue to be Paul and Barnabas. Continue to trust the work that God is doing in your life and trust the work that God is doing in the life of others. Much love and blessings. Go in peace.